Welcome back to the Heavy Spoiler Show. I'm your host, Jared, as Paul is stuck in traffic somewhere in the European countryside. So, um, uh, send your regards. But in this video, we're going to be breaking down the added scenes to the new version of Spider-Man No Way Home that is back in movie theaters, cleverly named Spider-Man No Way Home, the more pun, I mean, fun stuff version. <laughs> Sony, you're a modern day version of Don Draper with that one. Keep it up. But if you want to stick around for videos on your favorite Spidey menace, then make sure you web-sling that thumbs up button and also subscribe to the channel. With that out of the way, thank you for clicking this. Now let's swing into the more fun stuff spoilerverse with these new scenes. Okay, so before the more fun stuff version of the movie even kicks off, there's a Zoom call between the three Peters, Tom, Andrew, and Toby, respectively, essentially thanking the fans for supporting the film, turning it into something much more than just another Spider-Man film. Toby says that it was a beautiful experience for himself, and then both Toby and Tom surprise Andrew by saying that they love him, which is a callback to the improvised line from Andrew saying that he loved the other two Spider-Men during the final fight at the Statue of Liberty. It doesn't necessarily add to the film, but it is cool to see how much this film meant to the three of them. Now covering the scenes in order, we get a bit of an extension of the damage control interrogation scenes, specifically between Agent Cleary and Peter. Cleary questions Peter on why most of his targets were monuments or attractions, like the Washington Monument and Ferry Boat in Homecoming, along with the Tower Bridge in London, along with the Ferris Wheel in Far From Home. Obviously, Cleary believes that there's an overarching agenda that Peter has in his sights, even roping in the Night Monkey asking who their true identity was, which is cheeky callback to, you know, far from home because the night monkey is is Peter. Cleary questions Aunt May in a couple of added lines here or there, and honestly, I'm surprised this was a huge missed opportunity not to reference my cousin Vinny. She was in that movie. She was the star of that movie. I'm surprised that they just didn't throw a line in there for, you know, the parents, the older people out there. Just, you know, the MCU likes making references and cameos. Just, just do it. Now, if you remember the lead-up to Spider-Man No Way Home, there were talks that Tom Holland's brother, Harry, was supposed to be in the film playing like a street thug, with Spider-Man stopping him, stringing him up outside of a storefront. Well, lucky enough, the full scene makes an appearance this go-around, and pretty much follows this like beat for beat. Harry is chased after stealing someone's handbag, webbed up by Spider-Man with Spidey taking the bag from him. However, this is where things get a little comical. I mean, I guess comical is a broad term right here. When more and more passerby stop to argue whether or not Spider-Man should even be helping people, this essentially escalates into the original patron questioning whether or not this whole crime thug thing is an elaborate setup by Spider-Man himself. This is where the green paint comes into play that we see Peter trying to scrub off of his suit later in the film, forcing him to turn his suit inside out. A Mysterio supporter runs out of nowhere. It's a bit clunky to be honest, tossing the green paint on his suit yelling MURDERER and then running off exclaiming MYSTERIO WAS RIGHT. I don't know, it's nice to see Harry's scene make it into the final movie, but the biggest takeaway that I see here is like the street level everyday citizen's view of Spider-Man after his big scandal. I do wish that there would have been more Mysterio influences rather than a simple run by painting, maybe more, you know, of a Mysterio cult emerging, but the runtime would have definitely definitely felt bloated if they would have leaned more into that. Honestly, a lot of the scenes are wedged into the opening hour of this film, underwhelming like socks for Christmas, leaving a lot to be desired. For example, a quick couple second clip of J. Jonah Jameson calling the mayor a dingus during a Daily Bugle broadcast allowing Peter Parker to go back into school, which then leads to Peter doing the like walk of fame for his classmates, ending in a couple second stinger, revealing a random student almost looking directly into the camera in amazement saying, I, I can't believe he was my lab partner. Are we supposed supposed to know this dude? Now what may be my favorite added scene is Peter in gym class with his teacher Mr. Wilson, played by Hannibal Burris. As you remember, Wilson isn't too fond of Peter, believing in the conspiracies of Mysterio, saying that Mysterio was right. Basically, he doesn't like Spider-Man at all. And in this scene, in the same bullying fashion that any high school gym teacher would do, he starts picking on Peter by leading a chant of climate, climate, 
climate, slowly getting more and more students to join him. A defeated Peter Parker then leaps onto the wall of the gym and the crowd gasp as a silence falls over them like a, oh f are you seeing this right now? Peter begrudgingly climbs the wall as the camera pans back over to Mr. Wilson and with the most deadpan astonished look on his face, he says, Look at that sticky bastard go. <laughs> I audibly laughed at this one along with most of my theater showing. A again, aside from pumping in the added fun and comedy, this scene doesn't necessarily enhance anything, but the single line from Hannibal really got me. Then there's a random clip of Flash signing his Flashpoint book for fellow students in the hallway. Why is this in here? Who knows? Does it add anything? Absolutely not. Now the biggest section, like a solid three-ish minutes, are these random interviews from Betty Brandt with other classmates, teachers, essentially all of the cast for the school's news channel. She asks questions about, you know, what kind of conspiracies they believe in. She asks Ned what's an inappropriate text to send at midnight, and how Peter would react if he could talk to the spider that bit him. Would he thank the spider, or say, thanks a lot, spider? Clips from this section were actually used on, like, I think the Daily Bugle TikTok page when the film was rolling out in theaters for marketing, and it feels like added footage that they had on a shelf somewhere, and they're just like, shove it into this movie, who cares? But it is a little funny because of how bad they purposely make the green screen look, along with the weird interview questions that Betty is asking. The Undercroft montage was one sequence that I was actually looking forward to. You know, the group of kids dealing with the different villains, making fun of their names because of the alliteration, but this sequence all boiled down to adding like three shots to the prep montage of setting up their essentially like base command. Ned needs to plug in his computer, pulls an extension cord, and a bunch of boxes just fall because of it, I guess. Yay cinema, folks. But one interesting titbit, I mean tidbit, uh, wow, speaking is difficult, is a weird diorama of the Sanctum Sanctorum on the table that MJ investigates. After a closer look, the light where the seal of Vishanti is on, on the building, a shadowy figure is walking around, you know, in this tiny building. Honestly, I think it's just Doctor Strange, like, spying on the kids downstairs, but it does feel like it's a really weird to have it added there if it doesn't really add up to anything. Maybe there's more here, maybe I'm missing something, I'm not entirely sure. J. Jonah Jameson yet again has another Daily Bugle bit, which I gotta say is the funniest of all of them in this, I don't know why they really cut it, but it's an electric grid worker that calls into the show talking about how he saw the fight go down between Spider-Man, Electro, and Sandman the night before, and it's perfect because of the literal nature of what this worker is saying. So like he was talking to the Dirt Man right before the Power Monster disappeared with some sparkly web. I mean, I'm no geologist, but he summed that up pretty well. Now, adding to the cheeky fun of the movie is the elevator scene with all of the villains going up to Happy's apartment. This scene has actually been, like, released or shown many times already, and it's essentially, you know, like, five or six seconds, watching it as our characters calmly ride up in the elevator, and again, it's zero stakes, but it's a fun little scene sort of encapsulating all of the fun that the characters had during the set of, you know, filming this movie that we've seen in some of the behind-the-scenes footage. Word on the street that the reason it was cut from the final film is because John Watts wanted to keep the pacing moving for this, and to be honest, in this scene, it does sort of slow things down a little bit. However, I think the ride up is perfectly juxtaposed with the aftermath of what happens in the apartment, mirroring the calm, cool, and collected ride up with the pure mayhem, chaos, and green goblin spine buster on the way down. Oh yeah, Spidey, I'm about to Gwen Stacy you. It's a fun scene. What, what else do you want from me? Actually, the Night at the Roxbury head bob could have been a nice touch here. Now, Happy's very good lawyer was a scene that was rumored to be a deleted scene, however, didn't make it into the Blu-ray extra features. Those greedy Sony execs depriving me of Happy? How dare they? Well, guess what? It's included here, so uh, how generous of them. Earlier in the film, when Matt Murdock is meeting with Peter, Aunt May, and Happy, he tells Happy he's going to have to lawyer up because damage control isn't coming for 30% of his Stark tech. They are coming for everything. Okay, that didn't actually happen, but he did say he's gonna need a good lawyer because the feds still have questions for him. This scene then sees Matt Murdock and Happy in a conference room talking with 
damage control agent Cleary with a handful of other agents and lawyers. At this time, Happy's phone vibrates with a notification from his security camera in his apartment, and this is the same black and white security footage that shows the villains, Peter and Aunt May, sneaking into his apartment. Happy obviously reacts in a panicky manner with Matt leaning over and telling him, hey, stop sweating. Happy still with a frantic look on his face is like, how do I do that? Not much added aside from, you know, these cute jokes, but also somewhat meta to see Matt Murdock and Foggy practicing law together again. Because like, you know, Happy is played by Jon Favreau, and, and he played Foggy in the 2003 uh, Daredevil movie, but Matt Murdock was a different person, and he was played by... You know what? Never mind. It's Matt Murdock being Matt Murdock, and Happy being anxiously happy. There were rumors of extended scenes amongst the three different Spider-Man where, you know, they're waiting for the villains to approach the Statue of Liberty, and it's kind of this fun banter between the three of them. However, it seems like they only kind of added a line here or there between what was already in the theatrical version. At first, it touches on some emotional beats with them bringing up, like, second chances, which in Andrew's case, you know, ties back to his inability to save Gwen in The Amazing Spider-Man 2, but is also almost like this cool foreshadowing for his redemption by saving MJ later in the film during that Statue of Liberty fight. And maybe I'm looking too deep into this conversation. Who knows? But I feel like it's almost a self-aware line from Andrew himself about how he never got to finish his Amazing Spider-Man trilogy. As you know, Sony pulled the plug on that one. They went a different direction, rebooting the character, adding him to the MCU. This was Andrew's almost second chance at putting on the suit once again. And who knows? With the positive reception to his portrayal of this character, he might actually get another shot to, you know, finish this trilogy. But, uh, um, Gwen, um, already had her Rice Krispies. Snap, crackled, and popped. She ain't coming back. Sorry, buddy. Anyway, the rest of the conversation is just funny banter between them about how they don't understand Tobey Maguire's self-producing web fluid, how often he has a clean release, which has got to be a euphemism for shooting ropes. And after all of this, Andrew Spider-Man says he wants wants to see his holes. <laughs> yeah, things get a little weird and sticky in this version. And lastly, there's an actual proper post credit scene. Marvel fans rejoice because the Multiverse of Madness trailer is out and a final send-off from Betty the Baddie is in. The scene first focuses on a television in the hallway of the school between classes talking about graduation photos and a really cheesy PSA about school lunchroom safety, which I didn't know needed a PSA of itself, but then closing on a segment from Betty. So this is modeled after a high school graduation-esque final breakfast club wrap-up with Betty saying, we've had all of these memories together, almost died a couple times, I mean, who hasn't? But who can forget the experiences, the fun, and the events we all had together? While she's narrating this, it's showing clips and photos from the events of Homecoming and Far From Home, like the Decathlon and the European trip. However, the one thing missing from every single one of these clips and photos is Peter. It's not that he was Marty McFly back to the future erased from these photos, but rather he is either cropped out or a funny one where there's a bird flying in front of the photo and the bird is covering his face. Essentially, he got Mike wazowski here, but it's sort of an emotional look back at all of the events he experienced while the world and no one else remembers him being there. This also does a wonderful job of essentially illustrating how Doctor Strange's spell actually worked. Everyone still has all of these memories of this time, however, without any inkling of Peter. I'm surprised this wasn't included in the theatrical version solely to better explain Peter's status at the end of No Way Home. Plus, it shows that this is the end of the run for some characters. They've graduated, they're all going to be moving on, some will go off and do big things, while others will be hired to host a YouTube channel. You know, you can't determine your own future, you just go with the flow. <laughs> anyway, that's all of the more pun stuff stuff scenes that were added into the new version of No Way Home, aside from some random one-off lines here or there, or maybe a random joke. Aside from that, this is pretty much the same version of No Way Home. They should have honestly just called this movie Spider-Man No Way Home, the more money because the Morbius Morbentime re-release that we tried to do didn't 
work version. I don't know, I'm thinking of director's cuts and other versions of films like the Once Upon a Deadpool Christmas PG re-release. They at least, you know, did a couple different things. There was a lot of different jokes. Like, this feels like a real bummer for anyone that's expecting it to be packed full of deleted scenes and Blu-ray extras. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video, and obviously, I'd love to hear your thoughts on whether or not this more fun stuff version of your favorite Spider-Man movie was worth the ticket price, and if some of the scenes should have actually made it into the final cut of the film. We're currently running a competition right now, giving away three copies of Top Gun Maverick on the 15th of September. And all you have to do to be in a chance for winning is like this video, make sure you subscribe with notifications on, and drop a comment below with your own thoughts on this more fun version. We pick the comments at random at the end of the month, and the winners of the last one are on screen right now. So if that is you, message me on Twitter at Heavy Spoilers. If you want something else to watch, be sure to check out some of our other cool videos right Right over there, whether it be the twerking She-Hulk or the fiery dragons of House of Dragon, click on one, you know you want to. With that out of the way, thanks for sticking through this whole video. I've been Jared, and Paul is still stuck in traffic. Someone order the man an Uber. I'll see you in the next one. Take care and peace.